collection example. In this one, uh, we have a simply supported beam. It's subject to a central load of P, um, and it gives this expression for uh, the deflection. And this time, we want to know the maximum deflection and what the slope is at the left end of the beam. Um, and so if we set up our problem, so again, simply supported means we have a support on each end, uh, length of the beam L, the, B, the load acts in the middle here at L over two, halfway down the beam. Um, we have our equation for the deflection Y, which is, remember how much it bends. Uh, and we wanna know what is the maximum deflection. And it also wants to know slope at the left, which would be here at where X is equal to zero. So um, those are the things we're trying to find. So our solution, we'll have to start with our deflection function. So one thing it wants, so things it wants to know um, is the maximum deflection. We know when the maximum deflection occurs that the derivative of this is going to have to equal zero. So we need to find y prime, or the derivative of x, um, which we also know from our previous step is going to be theta of x. But just in terms of getting the expression, we know we can leave this constant out front. The derivative of what's inside. Again, remember to take the derivative uh, of this. I can just use each part and then subtract them. So x, for x cubed, I would bring the 3 down, multiply it there. I'd get 12x squared. And then I have an x term times that. So that would just be 3l squared times 1. So that would just end up with that expression for my derivative of uh, deflection or my slope. So I want to set y prime equal to zero. All right, so I um, have this expression, that's just a constant. So really I can just set this part in parentheses equal to zero. Of course, I guess the other thing I could have done was simplified this one more step. Uh, you had a factor of three I could have taken out here, so I could have made this P over 16 times EI uh, times four X squared minus one. Either way you want to do that is fine. I'll just go leave it in my unsimplified matter since I've already started that way. But basically I need to set that equal to zero. So 12 X squared minus three L squared equals zero. So I get that x squared equals l squared over 4. So x is plus or minus l over 2. If I take the square root of both sides. Um, that's really two expressions. Maybe I should write them out. So l is x is that or negative l over 2. Negative L over 2, where's that on my beam? Well, my beam goes from 0 to L. So negative 2 is somewhere over here. That's not really negative L over 2, somewhere off of my beam. So not surprisingly, with the force being applied in the middle, my maximum deflection seems to occur at L over 2. So, um, yeah, that's what we would expect. But again, we weren't asked to find, that's an important thing to know, is that it happens there, but we weren't asked to find where this happened, we were asked to find what it is. So I have to plug that back into my function. So my function being P over 48 EI, four L over two cubed minus three L squared times L over two. So I cube that, I get L over eight times four, so that's L cubed over two. I multiply this together, I get negative three L cubed over two. So the expression I would actually get there is 
by simplifying that, I'd get negative L cubed. Um, and so I could rewrite that as negative P times L cubed over 48 EI. But when I'm talking about maximum deflection, I don't really care what direction it's going in this case. I just want to know what's the most the beam is being pushed away from where I want it to be. And so I actually just end up taking the absolute value of that. Uh, and so that the maximum deflection is P times the uh, L cubed over 48 uh, EI is how I would end up down there. Okay, so that gets my maximum deflection. Moving on to the part B, is I want to know what is the slope at the left. So remember the left is, maybe I'll zoom out a little bit so I don't have to keep jumping back and forth. The left is all the way over here where we started at zero. So I just need to know the theta at zero. I've already found my expression for theta because I had to take the derivative along the way. So I just need to know what do I get when I take P over 48 EI times 12x squared minus L cubed and plug in zero. So 12 times zero squared minus three L squared. And so again, I'll keep my coefficient out front for a second. I get zero and I get negative three L squared. I can simplify that a little bit because I got a negative three and a 48. So I can get negative P times L squared over 16 E times I. And so um, I get a slope of negative, which makes sense, because again, if we think about pushing a beam there, we would expect, we would, if we push it down towards the middle, we get some sort of smiling face, so that slope is negative. Makes sense. Um, the value there makes sense. The other thing I, I should have clarified here is that, of course, that was in units of radians. Max deflection has units of meters, since that's what our beam was measured in. Um, and that would be example two.